Hey guys, it's Adam EK Swimming Bird, and welcome to Splatoon. The big 2.7 update is finally out, bringing eight new weapons to the game. But on top of that, we have a ton of balance changes to talk about. This affects every single weapon out there, and we'll go into those as we try out these new weapons. So here's a quick glimpse. Sheldon's gonna talk our head off about these in a second, and I'm gonna dust off my, my Sheldon voice. <laughs> it's been a while since we've gotten a new weapon, a few months now. Much less eight. I think this is the biggest bunch of weapons we've gotten at once. And it's not over yet. This is only volume one of Sheldon's picks. We're gonna get probably at least eight more in volume two is my guess. I think it would be the same size, if not bigger. And we don't know anything about those. We don't know when they're coming, but they are coming in the future, probably sometime around when the one year anniversary is for Splatoon. So those weapons, on top of all the changes, there's a lot to cover. So I'm gonna cover as much as I can in this video while we try out the Wasabi Splatter Shot. And then I'll, you know, cover everything that we might have missed in the next one. So let's head on over to Sheldon and see what he's got for us. He's gonna tell us we're looking fairly fresh, definitely with those squiddy dance moves there. All right, I'll just teleport in. It's a little faster <laughs> than walking or squidding. Hello, hello, what kind of weapon are you in the market for? Ah, you're looking fairly fresh. For one last time, or before the other last time. Yes, I think you have what it takes to wield my Wasabi Splatter Shot. Go on, give it a try. The Wasabi Splatter Shot is a splatter shot set featuring a, key, a few key adjustments by yours truly. The main weapon is pretty much the same as before, but splat bombs really amp up its frontline capability. Alternatively, try calling in an ink strike to scatter the bad guys and give your teammates the advantage. This is just the set for the discerning inkling looking for something spicy. Don't eat it, though. Uh, and that's not all. You've also ready to wield the Barry Splatter Shot Pro. I've taken the basic Splatter Shot Pro and improved its setup. Suction bombs help keep opponents at the perfect range to take advantage of the main weapon. And the bomb rush can really pressure the enemy's defenses, letting you run in and let them have it. All right. Don't let the, the tasty paint job fool you. This baby can deal some serious damage. Most of these weapons are tasty. Next is the Tempered Dynamo Roller. This beauty simply oozes style. Check out the sweet burnt effect. It does look pretty cool. The addition of Seekers has really improved the set's maneuverability and means to pressure the front lines when you've got them on the back foot. Bam! Killer Whale! This set suits battlers who like to pile on the pressure. Great for port mackerel. And that's not all. We got the permanent ink brush, the one I'm excited for. An ink brush with a modded setup allowing for a new play style. Open up a hole in the opponent's defenses with splat bombs and zip in to pressure them. And of course, my favorite, that, that if that's not destructive enough for you, we got the Kraken. This set is for aggressive battlers with a simple, uncontrollable urge to wreak maximum havoc. That's not all. We also got the Soda Slosher. Based on the regular Slosher, has some adjustments to the setup. It splat bombs, spread ink far and wide, charging up the powerful ink Zuka. This one's pretty cool too. Set is bubbling with offensive and defensive power. Give it a go, you'll see the difference. And we've got the Fresh Squiffer. It's a classic Squiffer retool to allow for a different approach. If your foes are laying low, suction bombs will let you easily smoke them out from wherever they're cowering. But if they're going on the offensive instead, no need to worry. Turn the tables on them with the Kraken. Lots of Krakens this time. It's definitely not a set for squids who are afraid to get their tentacles dirty. And that's not all. We got the Bamboozler 14 Mark III. It takes the Mark I and swaps out the barrel for a different bamboo pipe, a little more aged. Selling point is how the main weapon burst bombs can really hammer your opponent. That's not to mention the Ink Strike, which can make life difficult for even far off enemies. It's really a set worthy of the legendary name. Actually, no, a set that redefines what it means to be a bamboozler. I'm so excited. Uh, and that's not all. We've got the refurbished mini splatling, the last one. It's made from the remains of a tragically destroyed mini splatling. Features burst bombs and a burst bomb rush as its special. That's a lot of inkage happening in a hurry. This set is for splatters who want to leave everyone and everything in sight dripping with ink. And there we go. Let's take a look at these things as our inkling stares at it. There's the Wasabi Splatter Shot. Berry Splatter Shot Pro. I love that burnt in pattern there. This though, I can't wait to try out the permanent ink brush and the soda slosher. Some of these are crazy on the eyes though. The fresh squiffer and last but not, oh wait, the bamboozler of course. The aged look and the refurbished mini splatling. All right, let's grab the wasabi splatter shot and uh, we're going on a budget for now and we'll jump right into battle. Okay, so the wasabi splatter shot, this one has those splat bombs as well as the ink strike. Now, this is probably a pretty good choice for tower control, which we're playing right now, but also for Rainmaker. The ink strike is a great tool if you know where the enemy is and they've got the Rainmaker. You can just throw that down and they really can't escape it very easily when they're so slow holding that big golden tigerfish. 
And then the uh, the Splat Bombs, I think, are pretty good for Rainmaker as well. It's not too shabby on tower control. Well, hopefully we'll do well with it, because the Splat Bombs can still land on the tower well. And then that Ink Strike, if you know where the tower is headed, you can kind of lead your shot. Maybe not quite as useful as the Tent Attack or the Octo Shot. Whoa, jeez. But uh, <laughs> especially when you're getting blasted by a very splatter shot. Somebody got revenge for me. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, I think it, it's still pretty good. I, the Octo Shot and the Tent Attack might still see a lot of use on tower control with those suction bombs and the Ink Zuka, of course. But things are a little bit different for all the weapon sets, so let's get into it. So we got those new weapons. We also have a, a change to Splatfest. This is one that we even mentioned last time we uh, had a Splatfest. I talked about how this would be a good change. They're going to change the starting Splatfest power for S plus rank players. That way they'll get to play, play with other S plus rankers and the S rankers and and uh, yeah, there's no S minus, but the S rankers won't have to deal with brutal S plus players just stomping them in the Splatfest. So that's a good change. Let's get into something called Special Depletion. So without any special saver gear, any abilities like that, you'll, in the old versions, lose 50% of your special gauge when you respawn. And you, you know, you just gotta deal with that unless you wanna stack a bunch of special savers on there. But this has now changed where certain weapons are gonna lose more or less of that special meter if you're, you know, if you're using it. So let's start off now. These are the weapons with heavy depletion. And they're all trying to say them and gla I got a list here, but I'll do my best while I'm playing to try to look. But the heavy depletion weapons are ones that will lose 75% of their meter. Now this isn't a huge difference, but it can really affect how fast you get your special. So these are those weapons. So we got the Tentatech Splatter Shot and the Octo Shot Replica, which are very popular. You can see a lot of the weapons on this list are the popular ones. The 96 Gal Deco, the Luna Blaster Neo, the Dynamo Roller and the Gold Dynamo Roller, the Splat Charger, the Hero Charger Replica, and the Splatter Scope. So all of those are gonna lose more of their special meter, 75% when you respawn. I'm gonna dip out of there. I don't know if that Kraken was gonna jump off, but he might have. And now, this is medium depletion. These ones will lose 60%, so only a little bit more. What is that guy? <laughs> He's on a, like, cliff. Anyways, I gotta focus on the updates here. Uh, he was, like, hiding up there as a human or inkling beacon. So we have a, a few, uh, quite a few weapons that fall into the 60% depletion medium-sized one. That's the Splattershot Junior. The 52 Gal Deco, the Luna Blaster, the normal one, Custom Blaster, L3 Nozzle Nose D, the Carbon Roller, Crack On Splat Roller, Tri Slosher, Kelp Splat Charger, Kelp Splatter Scope, and most of the versions of the E Leader, the normal E Leader, Custom E Leader, E Leader 3K Scope, and the Custom uh, E Leader 3K Scope, and then the last two. Zinc Mini Splatling and Heavy Splatling Deco. So those will lose 60% of their meter. And I'll put a link to all these patch notes in the description. So if you want to follow along, <laughs> he's going crazy with the beacons. If you want to follow along, you know, and make sure that your favorite weapon isn't in one of these things, or even if it is, that's, and that's how they're trying to balance out some of the better or more, more popular weapons. Now, last, we have the light depletion weapons. These ones only lose 40%, so this is a buff for every other weapon in the game, including some of my favorites, like the Octo Brush and the Ink Brush. So, uh, also, I don't think this applies, ooh, jeez. Don't think this applies to, uh, to, necessarily, to the other weapons that just came out, since we, uh, we just got eight new weapons. Now, they don't mention those, I think, some of the weapon balances we'll go into uh, later are affecting all the other, you know, the weapons normally, like the Wasabi Splatter Shot we're using has the same basic stats as the Tent Attack and the normal Splatter Shot and the Octo Shot, things like that. So you'll have to look and, and see, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the new weapons are kind of not falling into some of the nerfs yet. Maybe they're encouraging people to use them, but they're similar in most ways outside of the sub and special. So yeah, there we go. We have this new special depletion thing, which is interesting and whoa, might be a good way to balance some of this stuff. Jeez, what even got me? That very splatter shot. And also, there's a big thing now with swim speed. If you're using any of these heavy weapons, you will have a around 10% slower swim speed in squid form because they're they're heavy, and I guess they want to make your mobility a little lower with them. It does make sense. It's basically like having Ninja Squid equipped 
but you don't get the Ninja Squid benefit. So the Dynamo Roller, Gold Dynamo Roller, all of the E-Leaders, the 3K, the Custom, you know, the, the Scope, and then the Hydrant, the Hydra Splatling and the Custom Hydra Splatling. It says Hydra in the, or Hydrant in the patch notes. So all of those really heavy weapons, you'll be swimming 10% slower when you use them. So let's get into another battle here. Okay, let's do one more match here, and I'll cover all of the main weapon balance adjustments. And then next time, we'll play with another one of Sheldon's new weapons, and I'll cover sub-weapons and gear abilities and bug fixes and all the other stuff, because there's so much to talk about. All right, so main weapon balance. The Splash-O-Matic and the neo splash matic their initial shot speed has increased by 10%, so that should help them keep up with some of the faster shooting weapons. Their degree of random shot spread decreased by 10%, so, you know, in that situation there, I was able to focus my shots and get that splat, but if you have that random shot spread, sometimes you can't get the damage you need, so they kind of made that a little bit easier on anyone who's a splash matic fan. And then the shot range has increased by 10%. Now, this is pretty pretty good buffs for the splash matic which I figured they were already pretty good weapon choices. I know they're, they're pretty popular. You see a lot of them, especially on tower control like this, you'll see them because of the suction bomb rush. Whoa. But uh, but now we've got the option of the berry splatter shot, like so, that just destroyed me, that has that suction bomb rush. So I wonder if they wanted to give a leg up to the splash matic But the splatter shot pro also got some buffs. We'll get to that in a sec. The end zap 85 and 89, the radius of their shots while you're still in the, well, the shots are still in the air has increased by 7%. So if you're, you know, you're trying to shoot and get a little bit of fall off damage, which if you might already know, it, it decreases the damage the longer your shots have to travel down through the air. And so you wanna kind of be shooting directly at someone, but this should help out a little bit with the end zaps. And then also they decrease the distance between individual airborne shots. So it should be a little bit easier to pinpoint on people with that weapon as well. That permanent ink brush is getting away from me. Now the Splatter Shot Pro and the Forge Splatter Shot Pro, their initial shot speed has increased by 20%. That is a huge buff. They really want people to get into the Splatter Shot Pros, I think, and give you a reason to, to use them, even with that decreased uh, amount of ink conservation. It, it tends to use a ton of ink, at least in my experience. And then also their shot range has increased by 5% for those Splatter Shot Pros. And that's that's a little bit of adjustment, but it's definitely good. You can help out, you know, outrange some of the other weapons a little bit. Now the 96 gal and the 96 gal deco, the damage of your first shot has been decreased to 52 damage from 62. So it should still splat in two shots, just like the, you know, the, the 96 is used to, but this will mean that damage up, or uh, defense up rather, will definitely be a big factor and damage up because if you, you know, you want to stack that on your 96 gal, it might help a little more than in the past. But now using defense up, you might be able to survive those 96 gal decos that plague so many players with their really fast <laughs> splats. So that's a nice little nerf on the on that end because I know the 96 gal deco is so popular and deadly. Also, the degree of random shot spread has decreased by 11%. So to make up for that little bit of a nerf, they gave it a little bit of a buff. The Jet Squelcher and Custom Jet Squelcher, your run speed when firing has increased by 50%. That's a huge buff, so you can outmaneuver people a little bit better with that. The Carbon Roller and Carbon Roller Deco, they reduced ink usage when swinging the roller by 30%. That's kind of strange because the Carbon Roller I've seen is really popular and deadly, so it's weird that it got a buff, but that's all right. Uh, the Splat Charger, Kelp Splat Charger, and Hero Charger Replica, they reduce the shot range on those by 20% if you're firing below max charge. So they're giving you a bonus, not just damage, but a little bit of a range when you charge it all the way up. And also the, sh the shot range has increased by 4% for shots fired by maximum range. So they're really trying to get Charger users to fire at max range because there's a decrease for not doing it and also a little bit of a buff in your range. The same applies for the Splatter Scope and the Kelp Splatter Scope, as well as the E-Leader 3K and the Custom E-Leader 3K and the Scope versions. But the difference with the E-Leaders is that they get a little bit more uh, of their, their time to charge is reduced by 6% rather than giving them more range because they have a lot of range already. So they just get a little bit less time to charge. And that's also offsetting the fact that you're slower using them. Like I mentioned earlier, you can't swim as much uh, as quickly. 
Slosher and Slosher Deco, the time from beginning of your swing until shot is fired was reduced by 20%, so it's a lot faster to fire off, probably around the sloshing machine now. And then also the duration of players being slowed, their speed when they're in your ink from your shots on the sloshers is reduced by 20%. So it uh, it's not quite as good, you know, it's balancing out the features there a little bit. And then last but not least for the main weapon adjustments, the Hydra Splatling and the Custom Hydra Splatling, they now do more damage per shot when fully charged. It's up from 28 to 35. So if you fully charge, that's the theme here. You fully charge those big weapons and chargers, you're gonna get buffs like uh, reduced tar charge time or get more range or more damage. All right, thank you guys for watching. As I mentioned, next time we'll cover the sub weapons. I also wanna say this is my 100th Splatoon video. And it's crazy, but I'm still having a ton of fun with this game. I hope you guys are having fun watching it and playing it as well. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time for more. Goodbye.